Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to work out the differential equation for Newton's law of cooling. We've already explained a little bit about this equation, where it comes from, and worked it as a separable first order equation, but in this video, we're going to work it as a linear equation. So just remember that Newton's law of cooling says that the change in temperature of some object is equal to some constant multiple of the difference in temperature between the object itself and its surrounding medium. All right, we'll go ahead and work this as a first order linear equation. We'll need to get it in the normal form first. That will mean distributing my constant k on the right hand side. So we'll go ahead and say dt dt is equal to k times t minus k times t sub m. I remember t sub m is the temperature of the surrounding medium here. Now you can see because this is d capital T dt, this is my dependent variable. This is like my y when I do dy dx. So I need to get this other capital T term on the other side to get it in normal form. So we're going to go ahead and say dt dt minus k t is equal to negative k times t sub m. And again, remember t sub m is just some constant, right? So t here is actually our dependent variable. If we go ahead and now in the normal form get the integrating factor. So remember the integrating factor for this problem will be e to the integral of whatever's in front of our linear variable here, dependent variable. This is just negative k. Remember that's a constant. So we'll be integrating negative k with respect to time. And if we integrate negative k, that'll just give us negative kt. So that's our integrating factor. We'll go ahead and multiply the entire equation by the integrating factor. So we will say e to the negative kt times our equation here. So we'll have dt dt minus kt is equal to negative k times t sub m. I remember that right side is all just a constant here. So what we normally do in our videos on linear equations, we don't distribute on the left side because we know that when we use this integrating factor like this for a linear first order equation, we just get a product rule on the left side anyway of our integrating factor and our dependent variable. So we know this is a product rule involving e to the negative kt and capital T. We're just going to leave that and remember that that's what's going on there. Here I'm actually going to multiply the e to the negative kt over there, so we'll get negative k t sub m e to the negative kt. And now what we'll do is integrate both sides with respect to time because we have dt here. So remember if we integrate this, this is a product rule for t times the integrating factor. So integrating this just gives us t times the integrating factor. So we get capital T e to the negative kt. And over here if I integrate this, think about these are all constants, right? Negative k and t sub m, those are all constants. So we could bump those out if we like and we're integrating this with respect to time. When you integrate e to the negative kt, this is a constant multiple of t in here, the reciprocal of negative k is going to come out, so that will reduce the negative k that we have out front. So we'll get t e to the negative kt is equal to just t sub m times e to the negative kt plus our constant of integration and now to solve for our dependent variable capital T, we just need to simply divide by e to the negative kt. So here we will get t sub m. We'll divide by this, and so that will go away. Here, if we're dividing by e to the negative kt, then that's actually going to give us c e to the positive kt, because we're dividing by that. So we get t is equal to t sub m plus c e to the kt or the way we usually see it is c e to the k t plus t sub m, where t sub m is this temperature that we approach in some sort of an exponential fashion. Now you might also see this if you think about calling the temperature when time is zero, the starting temperature, you might call that t sub zero or t naught, the temperature at time equals zero. You could think of this as an initial condition and then if you use this condition, this general solution, we can get a particular solution using this. So if we use this to solve for c, let's go ahead and plug that in. So that says when we plug in zero for time, then t is equal to t sub zero. So that would give us over here t sub zero is equal to c e 
to the k times zero would just be zero plus t sub m. And then if I want to solve for c, this is obviously c times one here, I would need to subtract my t sub m to the other side. So I get t sub zero minus t sub m is equal to our constant. And if we combine our c that we got with our general solution here, that'll give us the particular solution. Plugging t sub zero minus t sub m in for c will get us how we normally see Newton's law of cooling, which is that t equals the starting temperature minus the temperature of the surrounding medium times e to the kt, some rate k, plus t sub m. Okay, everyone, that is Newton's law of cooling worked as a linear first order differential equation. We have another video that works it out as a separable equation if you're interested in watching that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.